All right, so uh, now we have seen how to compute uh, double integrals over regions of type one and double integrals uh, over regions of type two, right? So uh, the next step is to show how to, how we can switch between integrals of type one and type two and how it can help us to uh, compute certain integrals that cannot be computed otherwise. Uh, it is actually a pretty neat trick, so I, yeah, I, I like it. So here is an example. So evaluate the, the iterated integral um, of sine of y square. And notice that uh, if we want to compute it directly, then we would have to integrate sine of y square with respect to y. And that is just impossible. I mean, um, you can try, but believe me that you will not succeed. You, you, it, it can't be done. So you, 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 you cannot do it in closed form. So the, there are some special functions, but uh, you, you can't really express it in terms of just sine, cosine, or maybe even inverse trigonometric functions or logarithms and, and so on and so, so forth. And it is just impossible. So, uh, but what if we, if we were to integrate with respect to x first? If we were to integrate with respect to x, then sine of uh, y squared is just, just a constant. So it means that at least we would be able to integrate with respect to x. Maybe then we would fail. I, I don't know, but you know, <laughs> at least the, the first integration would, would be possible. So uh, how can we switch the order of integration? So basically the idea is that, um, you know, if, if we look at this um, notation, then the, the, this notation really means that, so notice that, uh, so here we are integrating with respect to y first. So it means that, uh, so here, x is um, between two uh, um, two constants, zero and, and, and one. And here, the inside integral uh, tells us that y is between x and one, right? So, so here we have a type one region where x is between two constants and y is between two functions of x. Now the idea is that why don't we sketch it and see whether it is also possible to look at it as a type uh, 2 region. Right? So maybe let me uh, sketch it first. This is x, y, and then I'm going to, to show it uh, to show you how you can do it in, in Desmos calculator. So sometimes I mean it's just I mean, of course, on the midterm test, you will not have access to the Desmos calculator, um, but you know, it's, it's just a good idea to to, to sometimes ch check it against the Desmos calculator. So um, now uh, x is between zero and one, right? So uh, so the vertical line is x is zero is here. The vertical line x is one is here. So here x is zero. Here x is one. So everything happens between zero and one. Okay, and y is between x and one. So uh, the line y equals x is, is here. So here y equals x. And the line y equals one is, is here. So notice that this is just one point, is one, one. So here y is, is one. Okay, and uh, really, oh, um, how do I do it? So usually I do two like this. So the smallest point for y is, is x and the largest point for y is is, uh, is, is one. And so this, this is how y is changing from x to, to one. And so which means that uh, our region of integration is really this. Okay, so instead, let us think of it as, you know, as kind of the alternative would be that uh, y is between two two constants and x is between two functions of y so if y is between two constants so what is the smallest possible value of y that, that we can have so the smallest constant value of y. and it is it is here right so the smallest value of y is here is is so y is zero the largest possible value of y is here and it is one so it means that y changes from zero to one now x should be between two functions of y. So and uh, so let me pick a different color. So it means that this is the smallest value of x and this is the largest value of x. 
right? So, kind of the leftmost point for, for x is on the line uh, x equals 0. So here, x is 0. So x changes from 0 to 1. And the rightmost point is on the line y equals x. But again, so x should be changing between two functions of y. So we should really write x equals y instead. So the largest possible value of x is, is, is 1. Right, and here is kind of the alternative description of this um, as a type two region. So the, this is like a type two region. Now let, let me sh show to you how you can visualize it in Desmos. Right, so if the, this were, uh, if you thought of this as type one region, it means that well, in in Desmos it, it is a bit kind of um, so. Let me write it so. Um, zero less than one uh so as a type one region so let me write it here so type one zero is less than or equal than x and x is less uh, or equal than, than one and uh, x should be less than or equal than y and less than or equal than one so th th this would be like a type one region but when we enter it in, into desmos we actually begin with uh the second condition first so we write that x is less than or equal than y is less than or equal than 1. But notice that uh, now we have not restricted x, right? So which is why you, you will, instead of just triangle, you will get like a whole, uh, whole big uh, part of, of, of the plane. So to restrict x, you uh, insert curly brackets and write 0, the restriction on x in, in curly brackets. And that, that's our region, OK? So this is our region thought of as, as type one region. So now if you want type two, it's, it's kind of similar. But now, um, you no, know, according to math calculations, uh, zero is between, uh, sorry, y is between zero and, and one. And uh, x is um, between uh, zero and, and y. Right, so in order to enter it in, into Desmos, I, I will have to, to write to begin with the second condition first. So zero is less, less than or equal than x, less than or equal than y, and this is of course like the, the big part. And then I, I will have to restrict y to be between uh, zero and, and, and one. And notice that I, I get the, the same, exactly the, the same region, the same triangle. Okay, so which tells me that uh, basically my um, uh, calculations are correct. All right, so, and uh, essentially it means, okay, so blah, blah, blah. So it is impossible to find the integral as it is not an elementary function. So again, so what we do is uh, we sketch the region and uh, re-describe it, right? And that, that's what I've just, just done, right? So, um, So we can describe it alternatively like this. So y is between zero and one and x is between zero and, and, and y essentially, right? And so now I, I can just, just do the um, integration, right? So now, um, and again, so since my region is, can be re-described as a region of type two, so y is between zero and one and uh, x is between zero and, and, and y. I can rewrite my integral as the integral from zero to one, and then the integral from uh, zero to, to y, sine of y square d x and then dy. Okay, and now why is this easier? Because now this part is easy to compute since uh, the integrand is a function of y, so I can just essentially take it out, right? So the, the, this part is just really um, sine of y square times y minus zero, all right? And uh, so what, what I get is really the integral of the, this function y times sine of y square from zero to one dy. And now this really became became easier because now the antiderivative of y times sine of y square is it can be computed. So how can you do this? I mean, if you 
Um, you, you can, of course, do a proper U substitution, but instead you can think of this. So this is sine, right? So the antiderivative of sine is, is what is cosine. Well, strictly, yeah, it's minus cosine, so it should be like minus cosine of what of y squared. What if you differentiate this with respect to y? So the derivative of minus cosine of y square with respect to y is, is going to be um, the derivative of y square is 2y times the derivative of minus cosine is, is sine, is sine of y square. So which is almost the, the same thing. So it's almost the, the, what we want to get is just the difference is the, this factor of 2. So in order to kind of compensate for it, we just divide by 2. Right, so uh, the um, antiderivative of, of the, this is just one half uh, times the, so minus cosine of y squared over two, and then I've got to take the change from zero to one. So uh, at one, I, I, I just get minus cosine of, of one. At zero, I get minus minus so plus cosine zero over two, and cosine zero is is really just just one. So this is one minus cosine one over two. So cosine one is, is mean cosine of one radian. So I mean it is some some number. Okay, so and basically that's how we can do it, and that's the answer. So one half times one minus cosine one. It is pretty neat. So and at home you will. Do a few more um, exercises of this. So, okay, so that's basically the end of the, this part.